Good evening, ladies and men folk. It's time for another book review. Tonight we're doing book seven of nine in the Ali Beckstrom series. That's right, it is time for Magic on the Line. All right, this book has a lot of things going on in it. It really kicks things up a notch as the previous ones have. This one goes a little more. This time around we have the oh-so-fun character of Bartholomew Ray coming into Portland to see just why everything is falling apart. And he has a few opinions as to how things should be run and how to change things supposedly for the better. So it's interesting to see how that character pushes certain agendas throughout the book and how your standard group of Ali, Zavian, Tarek, Shame, and a few of the others deal with that. I mean, you have Maeve and Victor who have their own opinions of Bartholomew and just what he's doing to the authority and how he's going about doing it. Uh, you have the Hounds who are playing more and more of a part in just what's going on in Portland and how to deal with the continuing shenanigans that's going on with magic thanks to first uh, Grayson and Chase and now uh, Leander and Isabel. That's only going to get worse. With two books to go, oh it gets worse. But yeah, this one really starts showing all the characters pulling together and how they interact with each other against the impending threat that's kind of looming over them of how do, are they going to deal with Leander and Isabel. Because eventually they're going to have to. Those two aren't just going to stay dead and quiet and go retire and be happy. No, they're going to be a little more dramatic than that. But. This one was really good with the way that it all ended and wrapped up. And the next book will go into just what the consequences and repercussions are. Uh, yeah, this is another cliffhanger where you're going to want the next book in the series before you finish this one. Because you're going to want to know what happens. It's a very messy ending and it's going to take a while to clean up. But as with all book reviews, let's do the back cover so you get an idea of just how far along the overall plot this book in the series goes. And then we'll go over to the first page in a paragraph or so, so you get an idea of where this one starts compared to the last book. I took a deep breath, set a disbursement, a headache this time, and drew a sight spell. I pulled magic into it. The world broke into shades of old magic among vibrant, vibrant new spells, bright neon dripping down buildings, pastels drifting along the empty street. Alison Beckstrom has willingly paid the price of pain to use magic and has obeyed the rules of the Authority, the clandestine organization that makes and enforces all magic policy. But when the Authority's new boss, Bartholomew Ray, refuses to believe that the sudden rash of deaths in Portland could be caused by magic, Allie must choose whether to follow the Authority's rules or to turn against the very people for whom she's risked her life. To stop the plague of dark magic spreading through the city, Allie must put all that she values on the line. Her magic, her memories, her life as dead magic users rise to feed upon the innocent and the people closest to her begin to fall, Allie is about to run out of options. Yeah. This is a book where decisions are made for better or worse, and some lines are created and some lines are crossed. Some lines that I really was not expecting to be crossed. Uh... Yeah, the way this one wraps up, I was legitimately surprised as to how that one panned out and how Allie decided to do what she did. You'll have to read the whole book to find out what I'm talking about. And if you have read the book already, then you know what I'm talking about. 
And I'm curious, were you as surprised as I was as to just what her decision was in regards to Bartholomew Ray's offer at the very end during their confrontation? Did she do it? Did she handle it as she should have? Or do you think there was another way of going about it? I would like to know. Post a comment on the video so we can start a conversation. In the meantime, let's do the first page in a paragraph or so, so you know where this one kicks off. It had taken Bartholomew Ray, the overseer of Portland's authority, who was apparently my new boss, exactly 48 hours to contact me for a standard procedure meet and greet. By contact, I mean he sent to my door two goons who asked me if my name was Allison Beckstrom, if I was the daughter of Daniel Beckstrom, and if my civilian job was hounding. I said yes to all three, which scored me the grand prize of a meet and greet. And by meet and greet, I mean small room, bright light, two-way glass, and interrogative truth spells that would be illegal if anyone knew about them. The room itself wasn't too bad. Conference area on the sixth floor, tucked away behind the very real attorney's office in smack center downtown Portland. A red wood and marble table took up the middle of the room, while bookshelves on three of the walls bulged with gold-embossed leather volumes that I bet no one had touched since they'd been shelved. The other wall held two tall windows, blinds closed tight. The carpet was burgundy with whorls of gold at the edges. It gave the whole room a gilded picture frame feel, and it was so thick I felt like I was wading through loose sand when I walked across it. I had been escorted by the goons, who were both taller and wider than me, and had opted for the twinsy look of matching black suits, white shirts, and black ties, topped off with the standard secret bodyguard accessory, reflective sunglasses. The heavier, darker-featured goon on my left smelled of garlic and pepperoni, while the blonde, acne-scarred goon on my right smelled like brown sugar and pork. My escorts walked me down the length of the redwood table to an unassuming little black walnut desk in the corner. And you'll have to purchase the book and read for yourself to find out what happens from there. Yeah, this is... It's not my favorite book in the series, but it really does help start pulling a lot of the behind-the-scenes loose ends that have been going on. Uh, when I first started this series, I thought, oh, Grayson and Chase are going to be the main baddies, and that's how it's going to play out. But no, uh, there's more. Oh, there's a lot more to this overall scenario. A lot more than I expected. And, I mean... Throughout the series, you get an idea that, yeah, Daniel Beckstrom has a part to play in everything, and he planned a lot of this stuff out with a lot of potential options for himself, even when dead, because there's a lot of stuff. I think there's no way he could have even possibly dreamt of what would really happen and how things would play out. I mean, come book nine, you'll find out just how he handles everything that's come to fruition and how everyone else deals with it as well but this book alone really starts showing what can each character do what are they willing to do and how are they going to do it especially as magic starts becoming poisoned and if you're a magic user and magic's poison that's a problem and if you use magic too much and it's poison that's a problem or if you have magic within you or you are made of magic and things like that it's a problem. And for those of you who have read this book or will read this book, I'm curious what your opinions are on the Chekhov's gun for this one, which, granted, it's not Chekhov's, but it's interesting to see how that weaponry came to be and how it was used and what happens after. Uh, it'll tie into the next book, so... If you haven't read the next book yet, I recommend doing so, of course. Uh, if you want to learn more about this book or the rest of the series, go to devonmonk.com. Under the book section, she has a page for each book with a corresponding excerpt, if you want to read a little bit more. And she has links to all the online retailers where you can purchase a copy of your very own. 
And of course, it's most likely at your local brick and mortar bookstore at this point. Uh, this one came out in 2011, I'm pretty sure. Uh, $7.99, like the rest of the series. Uh, there's also the ebook options, which are, of course, cheaper. I kind of like having just the print versions because I like the physical copies to put on my shelf and to read at my leisure, but to each their own. As I've said in all the previous episodes for this review a thon, buy the whole series, it's definitely worth the investment, including the next two upcoming books in the review a thon series. Uh, tomorrow we are going to go over Magic Without Mercy, which is book eight in the series. And then Sunday is Magic for a Price, the conclusion to the Ali Beckstrom series. So if you liked this book, liked this series, want to see more review-a-thons of other series, then please subscribe to this channel, hit that thumbs up button, post a comment of what you thought of the book, what you thought of the series, how you felt the character progressions went along, all those fun things so we can continue some conversations. And tune in tomorrow for the next episode.